Welcome to the third video in a series called From Idea to Release. And in this video, we're going to show you all about mixing and automation in GarageBand iOS. Hey guys, it's JP from John Paul Music UK. And if this is your first time here and you want to learn all about music tech and looping, start now by hitting the subscribe button, click that bell, and you won't miss anything. So this is the third video in a five part series called From Idea to Release. We've had an idea for a song, we've recorded it in part two, and now we're down to the mixing and automation in part three. Right now, let's take a look at the song we recorded in part two. So we have the drums, the bass guitar, we've got the acoustic guitar, which we doubled up on electric as well. We've got a soul organ, we've got low and high for that. A grand piano, we've got the main vocal, which is quite low, and then we've got another vocal, which is a octave higher, and we've got two harmonies as well. Now a couple of things that I've done since the end of part two. First of all, the drums, I'm just going to zoom in here and I've actually taken little gaps as we can see here uh, there as well on the bar 74, bar 91, just to give the drummer a little bit of a space. And what I've done, a nice little tweak, if you have a look at it, it's actually just after the bar. So I haven't cut it off completely. The reason for doing that is because it will end with a bit of a crash on, on the cymbals as opposed to just ending. So it gives it a nice little end before the drummer kicks back in again. I'll just play that now and you can hear a little bit of the drummer. So it just gives a nice little gap. The other thing you'll notice from part two to now is the guitars. So what I've done is I've actually chopped the electric guitar out of verse one completely and out of the beginning of verse two. But we're gonna keep it in for verse three, which is this section here, and then it's gonna play continuously. And what I've done as well is if you go into the guitar and we double tap that, I've just done a little bit of tweaking around the presence and also the the EQ of the guitar itself. Now you'll notice on the left hand side I've got a lot of volume controls. If your garage band looks like this, all you need to do is swipe it out and then you'll see the volume controls. Now when I've been recording, I've always had that out uh, to begin with, but you'll see I've just been mixing it kind of roughly, just so I know where things are. So the drums are quite near the top and then the bass underneath that uh, for the sense of volume. And then the other thing that's only louder is the main vocal. I'm gonna bring them all down to zero and then start bringing them up again. But there's a couple of things I need to do before we get into that. So before we get to the mixing stage, there's a couple of things I want to do. And one of the things I promised in part two was how to add sustain onto the piano when you don't have a sustain pedal. So I wanna show you this very quickly. And there's one or two other things I'd like to do as well to clean up the audio for the vocals. So let's go into the piano roll now. We need to tap on what we've recorded. So we're gonna tap on the green classical grand. And then if you tap it a second time, we have a couple of options. And one of those options we're gonna go into is edit. When we click edit, it shows us the actual piano roll for the whole track. I can pinch and zoom in and I can move it around and that's all fine. But the question is, where is the sustain? And where do you add sustain? So what you have to do is we have to actually turn on the right tool, which is in the top left hand corner. As soon as we do that, you'll see at the very bottom it says sustain. I can actually tap on there and it adds a sustain note in. We can go through the whole track and add that in. Now, if you've done your recordings in parts, you could add that in. And if you copy and paste that, it will also copy and paste the sustain as well. I'm going to actually go back to the beginning and we can then start adding in sustain right for where we need it. So if I give this a tap, I will just want the sustain to come off just before uh, bar five and then we want to add a new one. So if I zoom out now on the classical grand, you can see the sustain there at the bottom and then also what I've done is I've actually split up the classical grand uh, because we need to do one or two things to it. You may not be in time or you may be slightly out of time you're not a robot we're not expecting you to be so what you have is you have quantization let me show you this now what you can do is tap on a section of MIDI go to settings and you can set the quantization to how many quarter notes or eighth notes or 16 notes of the bar the MIDI note shifts into so see you play it slightly out what it'll do is it shift it to the closest bar 
uh, or beat part of that beat for you. You can have it straight, you can have it in triplet or swing, and what you'll remember from part two is at the end of this song I actually play without the click track or play against the click track. This track slows down at the very end, so I don't want it to shift to the nearest bar because then it'll be completely out. So the very end of the piano I've actually taken the quantization completely off. So it's in time with me playing the guitar. Also what I've done is I've just split it up so there aren't any MIDI notes going in where the gaps are, so then we get a nice little stab, so there's no sustain, there's no uh, playing of that note whatsoever. Uh, it makes it a little bit more interesting when you go into the chorus. So if I go into the main vocal, if I double tap that, we are now in Radio Ready. Obviously, if you tap the middle, there are lots of different settings you can do and use. Also, I've just changed the way the harmonies sound a little bit. Uh, I've pulled them quite down in the mix. I just want them to be there, but not too forward. And also, when we did record them, I then set them to Sweet Chorus. I've changed my mind. So we're gonna now use Punchy Presence. So let's have a listen to all the vocals together. So if I solo all four, I'm just going to go straight to the chorus so you can have a listen to it. Home for our first draft. You and me, we're just sitting in this tree, looking kind of high from here. What do you see? Okay, so not bad. I think the backing vocals need a little bit of work. So what I'm gonna do is, when you tap on a track, what you can do is you can tap on the settings for that track. The settings for this track, they have no reverb on them really. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring a little reverb into each one. So just remember which track you're on before you start changing this. So just make sure the one that's gray, it does say punchy presence at the top there, but there are two that are called punchy presence and just make sure you run the right one. So we're going to bring in the reverb and then we've got a little bit of compression on each one. I'm going to go into plugins and EQ. This is where you can really start dialing in what you want from each vocal. So if I double tap this now, you can see we've got low, high, compressor, delay and ambience. But if you go into plugins and EQ, you can actually dial into the compressor and start messing around with it. So if you want to add it to the mix, you only want it to 50% uh, or you want the ratio. The ratio at the moment is 17 to 1. I actually want to dial that back to just around about two to one. The gain's a little bit further down and that's fine. These plugins and EQs we've got here, we've got effect EQ, we've got tape delay, we've got stereo delay and a visual EQ. But if I tap edit, you can actually see that they are all taking up a space. Now the compressor is there always and the visual EQ is always there. So what you can find is you've got loads of effects and they're built in, but what you've also got is audio unit extensions. I've done another video on audio unit extensions, AUV3s, uh, which I can put on a card and also in the description. But when you go into them, these are all the different ones you can get by Apple, you can get by things like companies like uh, Blue Mango, and there's all the different ones. Uh, we've got the effects there from TC Helicon. So what I can do is I can grab one of these and add it into GarageBand. So I'm gonna go with the TC Helicon uh, Voice Live Rack. And if we go into this now, we've got access to that app uh, directly in GarageBand. So let's pull this back. I've soloed just the bottom harmony and then what we're going to do is we're going to have a listen and start playing around with it. Me, tree, me, tree. Okay, cool. So I've just brought the other one in just to compare it. And the one that I quite like is called Echo Verb. So I'm going to apply that to the other punchy presence. So we'll grab that. Let's have a look. Let's add that in. Let's go back to that one. And let's tap on there. And let's grab that one as well. There it is, Echo Verb. So now what we've got is we've got this echoey reverb that's been added in to the backing vocals. You and me. We're just sitting in this tree Looking kinda high from here What do you see? 
So it just gives you a little bit of an insight into what you can do with the plugins and the EQ. So talking about EQ, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the lead vocal. So let's go into the lead vocal. I've already applied something on here, which is called Rough Rider 2. If you haven't got it and you've got GarageBand, I really recommend it. It's a really good plugin. So there's two ways we can do EQ. We've always got the visual EQ here. And this visual EQ is a three band EQ. And we've got the main gain on the right hand side. But what I want to do is I want to go a bit deeper than that. There's a really good EQ and a big shout out to Pete Johns for this one. Uh, if you haven't seen his YouTube channel, go and check it out. He showed out a great extension, which is LRC5. This is a five band parametric EQ. So if you start moving that up and down, you've got those there, you can move them. But if you select one and then use pinch, you can actually really dial in on the frequency that you want. So this one does come with a couple of presets, which are quite nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a flat for now and then let's start playing around. Now I need to listen to the whole track for this uh, just so we can hear what it sounds like relative to the whole track. So I'm going to unmute everything. I'm going to have a listen to this right from the beginning of the vocal and see where we head up. I can't settle down without you. I can't fall asleep at all. Looking at the stars above us Did you ever fear you'd fall? We can always find a nice little place And call it home for our first draft So, I'm quite happy with that now what I need to do is I need to have a look at a little bit of automation. Imagine if there was one website that you could take all your fans to, no matter whether they listen to you on Spotify or Apple Music or any streaming site, and they can get your music. Well, now there is, and it's called Hyperfollow by DistroKid. Let me explain. Let's say you want to tell people about your releases on Spotify or Apple Music. Instead of trying to send them directly to your album page or artist page, you can send them to your Hyperfollow page. There's some real benefits to doing this. For example, anyone who clicks the button on your Hyperfollow page will automatically follow you on Spotify. In addition to this, the button will automatically save your music to their library and you'll be given each fan's email address. You'll even be able to see the other music that your fans are listening to, even if that artist is not being distributed through DistroKid. You'll also get geographic information about your fans. You'll also know how many people visited the Hyperfollow page and how many followers added you. Another great option is pre-save. If you've uploaded your release to DistroKid and it's not yet live with Spotify, Hyperfollow automatically turns into a pre-save service. Fans can click the button at any time, even before your album or single or EP goes live. DistroKid will then detect the moment your album goes live and will automatically add all your new followers and saves on your release day. DistroKid will even email those followers and let them know when they can start listening. Hyperfollow is a free service for all DistroKid users, no matter which tier of DistroKid you're using, and it supports all your releases through DistroKid, even your previously released tracks. So what have you got to do to get this up and running? Go to your DistroKid account and sign in, click on settings, which is the gear icon, and then click Hyperfollow. Just remember, Hyperfollow is a free service. It comes free with your DistroKid membership. If you've not yet signed up, it's normally $19.99 for an entire year for unlimited uploads. But we've given you a special link that's on the screen now. It gives you 7% off your first year's annual membership, no matter which tier you pick. So thank you to DistroKid for helping us with this link. And also thank you to you guys for supporting the channel as well. Right, let's have a look at some automation. Automation is where things automatically happen. So for example, maybe I want to fade something in or fade something out. So what I can do is I can tell GarageBand to do this automatically. So there's, if you have to listen to the very, very end where everything is playing, there's, uh, you can hear the end of the way they play the guitar where I stop the track and you can hear the audio. So I want to automate the fade out for that. So what we do is we click on the icon and this time we click automation. This expands it a little bit and we can see it's a writing tool just like the writing tool in say for example the edit mode like the piano roll mode but what this does is it gives you volume automation. So if I move this up and down you can see there is a line there it tells you where it normally is. I'm going to use this here just so we can start fading it out. I'm going to fade it about there and then I'm just going to use the right tool. So if I use the writing tool turn that on I can then start creating little dots and then I create a dot for where I want it to start and dot where I want it to end. And then I'm just gonna pull that 
down. This creates a yellow line and what this means now is if I actually turn this off and come out of GarageBand you'll notice that the guitar tracks have a little yellow marker around the volume and what this is telling me that it's got automation on that track. So now as I play the ending you can see they move automatically. And that's a much nicer ending. We can go deeper than that. We can go into any track for automation, whether it's a MIDI file or whether it's one you've recorded in yourself. Even the drummer track can be automated. It depends on what you want to do. So we obviously we can write automation in and you can then drag these little dots around to actually tell it where to be. And say, for example, you've got a guitar solo. You might want to elevate that, but then bring down the organ, for example. You could do things like that. If then I find I've mixed this track and those guitars are too loud, I then need to change it in the automation, not the main window. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the automation off on the guitars for now, and then what I'm gonna do is I can set the volume and then bring that fade in back later. So my little tip for mixing is actually to bring everything down to zero and then start bringing stuff up gradually. You need a good pair of headphones or a good pair of speakers to mix. And just remember that your ears are a muscle, just like any other muscle in your body, they do get tired. Don't sit there and mix for hours and hours on end. You'll end up coming away with something you're really not like gonna like. Or you mix it, think it's great, you'll come back the next day and go, what was that? Just make sure that you're having rest periods in between mixing. It's just a really good tip. And make sure you go and listen to something that you want to reference as well. So if you know a certain track that you think, that's what I kind of want to sound like, go and listen to that track. Listen to the drums, listen to the bass, listen to the guitars, see where they sit, and we'll have a listen to it. The other thing we're going to do with mixing this track, as I said before in part two, is have a look at the spatial awareness. So to do that, what we do is we can actually tap on each individual instrument, and we can go to the... Uh, the settings and we can actually have a look at the track pan. So the track pan is where it sits between left and right. Normally they all sit to center and that's fine when it's a stereo system like the drums. So the drums I won't change but for something so for example like with the vocals uh, I might change the panning of that slightly. So what I normally like to do is start with the drums and actually bring them up slowly then bring the bass up and then bring the vocals in and then bring the main thing that goes with the vocals. In this instance it's the guitar then then bring the piano in, then bring the, all the other elements in, which is things like the organ, uh, the other guitar, and then the backing vocals to finish. I can't settle down without you I can't fall asleep at all. Just remember, once I've actually brought this up, it doesn't mean that's the final position. I'm going to be tweaking this in and out of the song. Looking at the stars above us. Did you ever fear you'd fall? Now we're in this game together. You and me, we're still sitting in this tree, looking kind of high from here. What do you see? You and me, we're just sitting in this tree. Take my hand and hold on tight. Let's dance tonight. So one thing to always point out is don't follow this visually. Have a listen to your ears. Listen to it and if you like the bass, turn the bass up. That's fine. If you prefer the keys a little bit higher into the right hand side, do that. No problem at all. This is your choice. So I'm going to carry on mixing this track the way I want it. You may mix it very differently. And then when we get to the end of this, we'll have a mix and then we're going to go on to mastering. Tonight. 
Okay, so I think I've got a mix, but I've been listening to it on these headphones the whole way through. With mastering, if there's a problem in the mix stage, it will show up in mastering, and you can't change that in mastering. You have to go back to the mix stage and change it here before we move on. So make sure it sounds pretty much correct before you carry on. Louder is not essentially better. Have a listen to this really quietly. So a couple of tips for mixing. Have a listen to it in your headphones. Have a listen to it on monitors if you've got them. Have a listen to it on a hi-fi. Have a listen to it on really budget headphones. Have a listen to it in a car. And if they all sound relatively the same on all of them, you've got yourself a good mix. Remember to leave yourself a little bit of headroom. So minus three to minus 60 B. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this down a couple as we go into mastering. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you very much. It really helps the channel grow. Please subscribe to the channel click that bell and you won't miss anything a quick thank you to our sponsor DistroKid for sponsoring this series and we'll see you on the next video which is part four which is mastering